In this video, we are going to look at an advanced integration technique called integration by parts. And we're going to do that by looking at the following example. Trying to find the integral of x times the sine of x dx. Now looking at this example and seeing the trig function there, you may think, could this be done by u substitution? Well, if we think that this function might have come from differentiating by using the chain rule, the only thing that makes sense for our inside function would be that u equals x, and du would then equal 1 times dx. Completing the substitution, we would get the integral of sine of u times du, but we would also substitute in another variable u for that x at the front. That means that even after the u substitution, there's no real change to the function, and this has not become easier to integrate. So the question becomes, if this didn't come from differentiating using the chain rule, what's another rule that we saw that created products of two functions? And the only one that's going to make sense here would have to be the product rule. It probably didn't come from quotient rule because our original function was not presented as a quotient. So let's remind ourselves of what the product rule says. In a situation where we have u times v, where u and v are functions of x, differentiating this product yields the following. u times the derivative of v with respect to x plus v times the derivative of u with respect to x. What we're going to do is isolate one of those terms from the result of the product rule this u times dv over dx. And we'll ask ourselves, what if we just wanted the integral of this with respect to x, the product of a function and the derivative of another function? Well, rearranging that product rule equation, we can isolate this one term to get that u times dv over dx equals the derivative with respect to x of u times v minus v times the derivative of u with respect to x and then integrating both sides we would be integrating u times dv over dx with respect to x and this would be equal to two different integrals on the right side the integral of the derivative with respect to x of u times v minus the integral of v times the derivative of u with respect to x dx. And then on the left side, for the dv over dx times dx, those dx's will cancel. Same with the du over dx times dx we see in the last term. The d over dx and the dx will not cancel out in that middle expression because that d over dx is an operator. It's not something that's actually being multiplied. Now what this all leads us to is the idea of integration by parts, which was the title of this video. And integration by parts is a way to integrate functions that came from the product rule. And much like the product rule for derivatives, integration by parts is a formula-based process. And the formula is the simplified version of what we started above. The integral of u times dv, a function times the derivative of a second function, will equal u times v minus the integral of v times du. Now there are four pieces of information in this formula, u, du, and v and dv. So we're going to take some steps to organize this process. And step one, the most important part will be to select u, the function that we're going to end up differentiating in the process. And the guideline for selecting the u function for integration by parts is the acronym ILATE, I-L-A-T-E. And each of these stands for a type of function that we're looking for. The first is an inverse trig function for the i. The L stands for a logarithmic function. 
The A stands for an algebraic function, any sort of polynomial terms like x squared or x cubed. The T stands for any trigonometric function. And the E is going to stand for exponential functions. And this just provides us with an order of preference. Step two in the process is to denote the remaining function from our original integral as dv. This is the function that we'll have to integrate to get the v function that we see in both terms of the formula. Which leaves us with step three. We're going to take all the parts and we're going to plug those into the formula. But note, in the formula, there's still an integral at the end. So we are going to have to try to integrate that v times du. Now, one thing to note here is that sometimes this might require another use of integration by parts. We're going to hope not, but we're going to be prepared for it just in case. So now, let's head back to our original example and try to make use of this process. And the problem we started with was the integral of x times the sine of x dx. And we'll begin by picking out our u function using that acronym I late. Now there's no inverse trig function or logarithmic function, but there is an algebraic function. We're going to set u to equal the x from that product, which means the remaining function, sine of x times dx, must be our dv. What we'll do is fill in the pieces that we're missing. Our du would have to be 1 times dx, and integrating dv, the sine of x dx, will yield negative cosine of x. And we're set to try using our new formula. So the integral of x times the sine of x dx will equal, starting off with u times v, we will get negative x times cosine x minus the integral of v times du, or in our specific case, negative cosine of x times 1 dx, or just times dx. We can simplify this down a little bit to negative x cosine of x plus the integral of cosine of x dx, moving a constant negative 1 outside the integral, and then integrating that second expression, we'll get the result negative x times cosine of x plus sine of x plus c, because this is still an indefinite integral. And I'd like to finish this section of the video by proving to you that this is the antiderivative of the function we started with. And we'll do that by differentiating our result. Well, differentiating the first term requires the product rule. So we'll get negative x times negative sine of x plus negative 1 times cosine of x. The derivative of sine of x becomes cosine x, and the derivative of our constant c becomes 0. The first term simplifies to x times sine of x, and notice the next two terms are opposites. They cancel each other out, and we're left with the function we started with. And I'd like to wrap up the video with one more example, actually proving the antiderivative rule for a very common rule for function. integrating the natural log of x dx. So step one, selecting our u function using the acronym I late. There is no inverse trig function, but there is a logarithmic function. So u will be natural log of x. Now the dv has to be whatever's left, and the only thing left is a dx. But really that means we have one times dx. Using these parts, our du will be 1 over x times dx, and integrating 1 dx, the v function will just be x. So, by integration by parts, the integral of natural log of x dx will be x times natural log of x from our u times v minus the integral of x 
times 1 over x dx from our v times du. And notice, on that second term, we can simplify a little bit. The x times 1 over x will just become a 1. And so now we can finish up with the result x times natural log of x minus the integral of 1 dx, which is just x, plus c. And this rule represents the antiderivative for the natural log of x. And just like every derivative or integral rule you have learned, the hardest part of this will be recognizing when to use integration by parts. But once you recognize it, remember, finding u is the most important part, and you do that with the acronym ILATE. Thank you for watching.